Hey friends, welcome to Pretty Historic, the show where we go back in time to learn about some of the weirdest beauty trends in history and then try them ourselves. I'm your host, Salorm. Let's do the thing. This time on Pretty Historic, we're talking about hair, baby. Not just any hair, but the wigs that adorn the tiny Austrian head of, you know her, you love her, you may even love to hate her. That's right, it's Marie Antoinette, the former <clears throat> queen of France. At just 14 years old, little Austrian Marie was married off to the Dauphin of France, Louis XVI, in an attempt to heal relations between the two countries after the Seven Years' War. Unfortunately, this meant most French people were predisposed to disliking Marie, which is pretty weird, like, who has beef with a 14-year-old? Feelings changed after 1774 when the king, Louis' grandfather, passed away after a bout of smallpox. The people of France, who had grown tired of the former king, hoped Marie and Louis XVI would bring a fresh perspective to the throne. Unfortunately for France, but fortunately for this episode, Marie was more interested in fashion and music than she was in being an innovative leader. And part of that fashion was big, beautiful, insane wigs. Dating back to the eighth century, French kings appeared to be genetically predisposed to early baldness. Then, in the early 1600s, King Louis XIII bit the bullet and became the first French king to wear a wig, which at the time were called perukes. Turns out, King Louis XIII was a trendsetter, and wearing elaborate and expensive wigs became a common style amongst French noblemen, bald and hairy alike. By the 1700s, the powdered wig was a common style for wealthy men and women across Europe. For Marie, these wigs were a tool used to fit into French society. The most fashionable color for these wigs was silvery white, but hair that shade was so expensive that most resorted to using scented pastel powders to color their wigs, with popular colors being pink, blue, violet, and gray. Look, Salorm, are you talking about Marie Antoinette? Yeah. I heard a thing or two about her. Is, is a seat taken? No, oh, it's not really a Pop seat, but really. okay. You know about her, her weird tiny little village that she built on the grounds of Versailles? No, I didn't. The, the Amu, they called it. The, the Amu. I don't know how to pronounce that. I'm I not French. I don't know French, how to pronounce any of these words. She'd bring her friends there and they'd pretend they were in the country, you know, like all, all the buildings were built to look rustic and kind of pre-distressed like jeans in 2011. There's a whole farm. She had uh, cows and goats, a big old water mill. It even had a dove coat. Have you heard of this? A, a do dove coat? A dove coat? It's a building that you build when you've got so many doves that you need to build a building to keep all your doves in. Okay. Isn't that crazy? God, I'd love to own hundreds of doves, wouldn't you? Actually, yeah, I would. You know, some people gave Marie a lot of guff for her little village, but it was actually a trend among royalty at the time. And hers wasn't even that extravagant compared to some others of the era. Marie's village may have had, uh, you know, a thousand gorgeous porcelain pots adorning her rustic little town. But meanwhile, the Comtesse de Provence had a little village featuring a dairy made of marble equipped with silver milking jugs. What? That's, that sounds incredible. <laughs> But look, am I defending Marie's little poverty play shtick here? Absolutely not. No. But if I was rich beyond my wildest dreams, would I also build a little farm where I could invite my friends over for hoedowns where we danced and danced until we could dance no more and then retire to stuff our mouths with fruit and milk among the fluttering of butterflies and the sweet songs of nightingales? Yeah, I'd, I'd probably do that. I guess I would too. I'd yeah. not, maybe I'd even build a little Taco Bell or something. I don't Ooh. Know. That'd be nice. Anyway, that's just something I heard. Oh, yeah. So, well, thank you for dropping that knowledge. Yeah. We, we're, I got stuff to do, so. Yeah. But, uh, you know, let me know what's, well, how this all works out. I'm, I'm excited to see this. Oh, okay. Well, have fun back in the back of that bookcase, I guess. Does he, like, live there? Okay, back to wigs. Wearing a big wig usually meant you were in a high social class, but it could also indicate your job. Wigs with a full bottom were part of a judge's standard uniform. Bob wigs were initially worn by tradesmen and later adopted by the clergy. This is actually thought to be one of the reasons wigs became as elaborate as they did. To avoid confusion over who was wearing one for their job, 
and who was just trying to look cute out in these French streets. And oh, how elaborate they became. By the time of Marie's reign, the bigger the wig, the richer and more important you were. So if you were looking for a sugar daddy, look for those big wigs. There were dozens of wig makers on staff at Versailles who created those impossibly tall and iconic wigs favored by the French royal court called macaronis. These wigs were sadly not made of pasta, so like, why name them that? They were, in fact, towering rolls of hair formed over frames, which were then decorated with feathers, pins, fruits, vegetables, and flowers. These wigs were works of art and could even be used to depict elaborate scenes like a battle or a miniature still life with tiny furniture. And to make high quality wigs was no easy process. One would meet with their wig maker, many of whom were also barbers, to discuss and plan their ideal wig vision. And of course, get their head measured. Hair would then be purchased from a hair merchant. Totally normal job. The highest quality wigs were made of human hair and were very expensive. Now it's said that one average wig was the same price as a hat, coat, breeches, shirt, hose, and shoes combined. So for the price of a whole outfit, you could afford a just okay wig. Less expensive wigs were usually made of horse or yak hair. Once purchased, it was then cleaned, combed, and bundled, then boiled and dried. This has to be history's longest hair care routine. Afterwards, pins were used to curl the hair into whatever shapes were desired. Then it would be baked to ensure the shape's stability. These pieces were then sewn into a silk frame. Next, the wig would receive a final round of trimming and shaping with scissors, combs, and a curling iron. The fun came last with the wig maker adding in any perfumes, powders, and decorations as his final step. Despite her initial intention to use these wigs to assimilate, for the French revolutionaries, they became a symbol of Marie's excessive wasteful lifestyle. And despite wearing a simpler hairstyle for the last decade or so of her life, the enduring image of the wigs proved fatal to Marie and her image. But it wasn't just her wigs that solidified her fate in the French Revolution. Marie was more decisive politically than her husband, and her influence convinced Louis to resist the Revolutionary National Assembly's attempts to abolish feudalism and restrict royal powers during the Revolution. In 1793, she was tried and executed by the Revolutionary Tribunal, and when it was time to face the guillotine, they say that the executioner trimmed her iconic hair so short that it was barely visible under her cap. It's sad. She kind of deserved it. Now it's time to make some wigs. But first, a word from our sponsors. This video of Pretty Historic is sponsored by BetterHelp. It's no secret that life can be tough. I know that for myself, just trying to find a good balance between work and hanging out with my dogs and my wife can be a huge cause of stress sometimes. So if you're struggling, you're not alone. And that's where BetterHelp steps in. BetterHelp offers a customized online therapy through video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. The best part is you're in control so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you're uncomfortable. With a network of over 20,000 therapists, BetterHelp gives you access to a broad range of options no matter where you are in your life. Just fill out a questionnaire to help assess your specific needs and you'll be matched with a therapist in under 48 hours. And if your match doesn't seem like the right fit, you can actually request a new therapist anytime at no additional charge. Accessing BetterHelp is easier than ever. You can schedule a secure video or phone session or even exchange unlimited messages at the touch of a button. Most importantly, everything you share is completely confidential. I know that my experience with therapy has been incredibly helpful for me. After just a few sessions with my therapist, Julie, I was able to start using the tools that she gave me to work towards a healthier balance at work. Thousands of others have benefited from this service too. In fact, so many people are seeking out therapy right now that BetterHelp is currently recruiting additional therapists in all 50 states. So join the 2 million plus people who have taken charge of their mental health with BetterHelp. Get 10% off your first month of therapy at betterhelp.com watcher or click the link in the description below. That's betterhelp.com slash watcher. Thank you to BetterHelp for sponsoring this video. And now back to Pretty Historic. All right, enough death. We gotta make some wigs. But first, we gotta find some stuff to put in the wigs. You know what that means? Shopping trips. Welcome to Michael's. We're here looking for some things to put in some wigs. Are you ready? There's a lot of stuff here. 
I don't even know where to start. I feel like I'm gonna want some pearls, some feathers, just some royal feeling things, cause that's what Marie had in her hair. But I'm gonna put some weird stuff in, just because that's what I would put in my hair if I was her. Ooh, there's seashells. Rocks are cool. I don't know, rope doesn't really feel like very royal to me, so maybe not, but it's rope with lights in it. <gasps> Wait, let's go. <laughs> oh, shit. To be honest, I don't know how I would stick some of these other fruits into the hair. Like, well, what are these made of? Okay, this could work with a pin. Everything, you know what? We don't got a budget, right guys? Yeah, I grab everything. Actually, get me, get me one of those things too. Okay, wait, I want these too. Some of these, maybe two of these. Maybe 10 of them, because we're rich. Um, Why do you keep saying that? <laughs> ribbons, 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 ribbons. These are giving birthday. You know, I need them to give aristocrat. We're getting there. Yeah, get in the cart. You, let's go. It's cotton balls, that's cool. Maybe she wore cotton balls in her hair. We don't know, you weren't there. I feel like we got a lot of good stuff. I'm excited. Let's put this wig together. Yes. Well, that was fun. Now we're ready to make some wigs. So I invited my friend Ryan, who I feel like is really good at wigs. Tell me what you do. I do drag, so I've been in many a wig from time yeah. to time. I was in one this weekend, actually. It's like, I, I love a good wig. I love putting them together, too. I like to make crafts and like do all kinds of stuff. Yeah, I'm you're excited. perfect for this, ah. honestly. Okay, Ryan, what did you think about the story of Marie Antoinette? I didn't realize that they powdered the wigs and the chaos that went, went into making those wigs. They were like super expensive, which blew my mind. What is the most expensive wig you would buy? Um, I think I bought one that was like almost $100, but like that's a cheap wig. Yeah, like almost, nowadays, <laughs> that's a cheap wig. I have a couple wigs that are worth more than $100. That, oh, it, look at you, <laughs> Marie, <laughs> oh 2.0. Oh oh. What would it look like? What would what would you describe your ideal wig? Super big, super model, like kind of like flowy wig. Like I remember I saw Cardi B wearing a wig like this mm -hmm. once and they literally took two wigs to like make it look full. And I was like, oh, I want that. I want that right there. How long is this wig? Like, is it long or just full? It's full, but it's like, you know, it's like here. Maybe. Oh, okay. So it doesn't have to be crazy long. But Honestly, like, iconic. Marie Antoinette is such an icon. And like, I feel like if she lived today, she would destroy Instagram. She would totally kill Instagram. Okay, Ryan. <laughs> so for this wig, what do you think you're gonna do? What is your plan? When I think of like a Marie Antoinette wig, obviously it's like the royal type of thing. So I'm, right. I'm gonna make a base level that is like, constructed somehow and then build the hair up on it. But I'm like, I wanna go more colorful because I feel like I don't remember her wig being specifically colorful and I want to have a lot of flowers and um, a little bit of like blue and pink in there. Uh -huh. Adding some fruit maybe, Ooh. you know, make it look fruity. <laughs> mm -hmm. My wig, I don't really have a plan. I'm gonna go into it with confidence. I'm, I'm gonna wing it <laughs> and I'm gonna kill it. May the spirit of Marie May you channel your spirit into our hands and our fingers as we craft these beautiful wigs. Give us your aristocratic strength. Mm -hmm. Give it to us. Thank you, Marie. Let us eat cake. Ooh. Okay, I have not seen these wigs yet, so let's open it up. Oh, you don't. I'm excited. I am too. I'm very pumped about this, this wig moment. We're gonna have a wig out. <laughs> <laughs> Wigging out. <laughs> gonna be a hairy situation. Oh, oh. So I hate myself. Okay, no, this is cute. <laughs> this is good length. I think this is gonna be fun to build up on. Don't you already feel kind of like? I kind of feel like a badass. Right? Yeah, oh. ordering people around, uh, having macarons. Is no one wants macarons? to work these days. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody <laughs> wants to work. Get your ass up and work. What I think uh, makes the most sense to me is like to start building the chicken wire around the wig at the bottom. So put the wig down and then kind of like put the chicken wire around here and then start to build up on that. Cause I really like it when these wigs have like little curls coming out of the at the like bottom. Mm, the baby hair? I think that, oh yeah, a little, mm -hmm. you know, a little, little bish, 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 bish. And so I'm gonna do that, try to have a little bit uppity. So maybe I'll use the chicken wire for that uppity. Yeah, that's a word. And then I'm gonna have curls on the side here. You're gonna see it, it's gonna look like a thing. I hope it works. Ready for business. I'm afraid of cutting myself on this. You got a medic? The spirit of Marie Antoinette will not let you yes. get cut. Well, I don't know if that's not true. She her got her head got shut up, cut chopped off. off. So yeah. maybe, <laughs> maybe she shouldn't be the, the spirit we're calling on. Now that I think about that, I'm like, I don't. We should be calling someone else. Uh, we both need help. Let's be real. Oh my God, is that a knot? No, no. Yes. Just throw it in there. There we go. 
This is gonna work. It is gonna work. Uh, but right now, I, my goal is to just get the chicken wire covered with hair. It will give less Playboy, but honestly, there's nothing wrong with a Playboy Marie there's Antoinette. Wrong with you a Playboy. know, if Playboy wants to take this wig and like do a full on Marie Antoinette photo shoot, call watch it. <laughs> I'm like struggling with how I'm gonna put this up. Do we have any hair ties? I'm gonna take off my hair tie. Yeah, you know what? Do it. Hold on. Slow motion hair unleash. Oh yeah. Uh, yes. I didn't see it, but I felt it. You felt that. you felt the the sexuality of it all. I did. Oh my god, I'm sweating. Okay, I okay. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> ah, how do you do this? I think there's a way for me to just put all this hair in a ponytail. You know what? I'm realizing before you do a lot of that, what it makes. Okay, yeah, that works. Actually, never mind. That is it. Is it? Is it it? It might be. Uh, let it back down, maybe? Or that. Slurm, I was wondering though. <laughs> Slurm, no, baby, baby, no. Beautiful. You, it, it, I mean, she is. She's beautiful the way she is. She is beautiful the way she is. Okay, <sighs> so this isn't really going the way that we planned. No, it's a little, a lot difficult. We are prepared, we have backup wigs, oh. so no worries, we will save this for another day and we are going to bring out those wigs and just skip to decorating. Yeah. You know what, we can decorate. Yeah, yeah. If nothing okay. else, let's decorate. Where are the wigs? Wait a minute. Oh. Yeah, I love them both. This is very... It's giving, it's like the scary kind of Victorian. I don't know what you mean, but sure. You know what I mean. No, I don't. You know what I mean. Sure, I do, <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. Oh wow, this is very fun. Get out of here, ugly. I'm gonna just make a little bow. Oh, to go for my thing. <laughs> but I wanna put something on it, just to like, ooh, maybe a little pendant like that, maybe that a little lemon pendant. Cute. That's adorable. In my mind, it's a Parisian cafe. I have like a little bird up top with little cafe chairs, and there's just lemons and fruit all around. Mine is a floral boss. Um, nest. At this point, I'm just kind of frantic, and I'm just putting things everywhere. Did I just put one of these in? It's gone. It's pretty. She's pretty. Tell her she's pretty. I feel like Marie Antoinette would be proud. That's more moral of the story. I think she'd be very proud. Sure. I feel like we're like done-ish. Done-ish. Oh no, done -ish. no. This is very complete. I feel like this is a work of art. I love this, honestly. Yeah. I feel like we outdid ourselves. Wait up. Turn it on. Oh yes, the piece de la vie. Show the songs. people what they want. I'm so excited about it. Like, honestly, I went for like Parisian night cafe. Right. If you look up top, there's like a little bird with a wig. The bird is at a table with little tables and chairs. And he has a little wig too. He didn't oh. want to be left out, so he oh. also got a little wig. I cut him a little, a little updo. A Midsummer Night's Dream. That's what I'm gonna call this. Um, Ryan, did they have electricity back then? There was electricity in the power of a queen, god damn it. That's what it is. Sorry, I was I'm sorry. Okay, well mine is kind of just like a bird's nest. I got these little cute birdies over here. I'm very proud of these bows with little chains and everything like that. Those bows are like, that is like, you can sell that on Etsy right now. Not that it really matters, but do you want to go see what people think? I absolutely want to see what people yeah, think. Yeah, because these are already fly. Because what is art if it's not to be seen? I know. <laughs> Announcing the royal court. <laughs> How do you do? I, I don't even know. This is, I feel so uh, starstruck. A fancy bird mm -hmm. with a mushroom? At night. Oh! Uh, honestly, just had a bright idea. Bright oh. idea. Yes. oh, hello. Oh, look at what's happened. It's just casual thing. Something's happening. Just <laughs> they're great. Just bask in That's, the details. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Wow, Wait, yes. I'm sensing some dissent in the royal court. So <laughs> no, okay. I assume he's just overwhelmed right uh, now. I honestly wasn't expecting it to look like this. The, Not in a bad way. So good, you made so Not fantastic. Yeah, yeah it right. Was fantastically interesting. <laughs> okay, so overall, I think we killed it. But the question remains is this a trend that we should bring to the future or leave in the past? I definitely feel like we should bring it to the future. Mm. We're in a time where wigs are like really hot. So I feel like why not do more with your wigs? Right. Like why, your wig doesn't just have to be hair. So I say bring it to the future. I am totally down with bringing this to the future as long as I don't have to make the wig myself. But I love the decorations. Yeah. I love putting flowers and birds and grapes in my hair. So actually like why not? Like why not just wear 
hair like this every day. Let's just bring back wig makers who make expensive, ornate wigs. Somebody open up an Etsy shop right now. Yes. Oh, yeah. Oh. Us. Us. Is this where our business starts? I think this is the beginning of our business venture. Our wig making business that just takes over the freaking world. Our wig making business that Beyonce invests. Beyonce invests. In. Wow, think about it. Like, this could be the next big thing. This is the future. This, this is, the is the future. This is the future. Well, tune in next time. I promise you, it's going to be pretty historic. Hey, the name of the show. You did that. I like that plug. <laughs> <laughs> See what we did there? Yeah. Come on, let's get out of there here. You know what, Steven? I'm going to de wig myself just for you. Here you go. And he. Whoa! Yeah, wow. I get the wig. And you now the you. Wig on. Oh, 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 oh